know that Wyoming will be your new home. Life on the Red Horse Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Alabam finally had a chance to prove what a wonderful horse Red really was, but not in too pleasant a way. As Alabam lay on the ground, unconscious, Red ran to the ranch corral and led Mr. Carter and the boys back to Alabam, perhaps saving his life. We haven't yet been able to find out how badly Alabam was hurt or what caused him to fall from Red as he rode across the Bar D Ranch. As Alabam lays on his cot in the bunkhouse talking to Rose, the boys are just outside the door singing. Where violets bloom and fade, there's where sweet blue white Alban lies in the lonely grave. She died not broken hearted, nor by disease she fell, but in a moment parted from the one she loved so Does the music bother you? The music? Mm -hmm. I sure don't, Rose. Now, don't you keep bothering yourself about me. I'm going to be all right. Well, I hope so. How does your head feel now? Well, it does feel a little like a pumpkin, but <laughs> it ain't nothing to worry about. I'll be up and out of this bunkhouse before you know it. Now, please lie still, Alabam. Oh, you're sure nothing's happened to Red? Oh, Red's all right. He's missed you down in the corral today, though. You know, I believe he's as worried about you as the rest of us are. Uh, Red's sure some horse. Smart as they make them. Mm-hmm. They might never have found you until it was too late if it hadn't been for Red. He led Dad and Cheyenne right to where you were lying, and then they brought you in. Oh, Alabam, I was afraid that... Oh, I don't know what I'd have oh, done if... Oh, you quit worrying yourself about me, Rose. <laughs> Say, come to think of it, you didn't sleep a wink last night now. Oh, did I didn't you? mind that. I'll have plenty of time to sleep after you're better. Oh, Gosh, hang it, Rose. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with me. I'll show you. I can get out of this bunk right now. No buck-hided cowboy like now. me. Is now, Alabama, please, lie down. Oh, I ought to be ashamed of myself for exciting you like that. Now, keep quiet. Texas is singing. Where the foreman takes care of his own. There'll be an empty saddle tonight. Riding the range last Saturday noon When an author had started to blow His chin on his chest Heading into the west He was starved by a cross off down low There's a crazy young calf Had strayed from his maw And was lost in the snow and the snow Hey, 
He's brought you something to eat from the bunkhouse. Oh, with me, boy. Don't you be all the time pesky around. Miss Alabama, you don't crave nothing to eat, do you? Uh, set it down, Cookie. Yes, yeah, sure. I can eat your cooking, Cookie, anytime. Jonah, I'm sure glad to hear you talk again, Miss Alabama. I thought you was practically uh, finished. Cookie, you mustn't talk to Alabama now. He's resting. Yes, Miss Rose. Man, I, I didn't think you was going to live at all. Cookie. When Red come in here, I was fixing right after you on old whirlwind, uh, my bureau. Cookie, please. Yes, Miss Rose. I was going. Old whirlwind, would you hold his heavy and you want to go fetch you? Uh, uh, Cookie, hurry on back to the Chuck house now, please. Yes, I wish old whirlwind make up his mind he's going to run. <laughs> I've got a gal in the Sourwood Mountain Ho de um de idle de She won't come and I won't call her Ho de um de idle de Roosters are crowing in the Sourwood Mountain Ho de um de idle de So many pretty gals I can't count them Ho de um de idle de Big dogs bark and the little ones bite you Ho de um de idle de Big girls court and the little ones fight you. Ho de um de idle de My true love lives up in Ledger. Ho de um de idle de She won't come and be dirty file fetcher. Ho de um de idle de My true love lives over the river. Ho de um de idle de A few more jumps and I'll be with her. Ho de um de idle de I got a gal in the head of the holler. Ho de um de idle de She won't come and I won't oh, call her. Ho I guess you ain't looking for company with Rose here. No, but I've been telling Rose she needs some rest. Oh, You'd oh, think no. I was a crippled yell in the way she's standing hurt over me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just like a mother was, Rose is. Always putting herself out. And I like to hear you say that, Dad. <laughs> you mind the time that Ma Carter took care of me when that big cayuse kicked me, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, she was that way all her life. Oh. Alabama, you reckon you're strong enough to tell us the rest of what happened to you over on the body? Well, I guess there ain't much more to tell, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Dan Higgins had said something to me about seeing some of the red horse cattle straying over across the body toward the Badlands. Mm. I took Red and rode over there. And on the way back, I, well, it seems I got a little dizzy, as near as I can remember. I must have fell off my horse and fall knocked me out. Mm, you just got dizzy, huh? As near as I can remember, it's all, all a little hazy right now. Well, of course. Well, maybe you'll remember more about it later, but how yeah, that red's a wonderful horse you got there, Alabama. Mm, he okay. like to tore the corral gate down until we <laughs> followed him out and found you. <laughs> You've done a great job of training him. But I ain't taking no credit for what he did, Mr. Carter, but I'm powerful proud of him. He'll be great when we round up. But uh, the roundup's got to be mighty soon, Alabama. The boys have got to bring in every, uh, every head and put it on the market as soon as possible. Sorry you won't be with us. Why, what do you mean I won't be with them? I ain't missed a roundup on a red horse in the last ten years. Well, I hope you're feeling well enough for it, but it's it's got to be mighty soon. The money from that herd's going to mean everything if we're going to save the red horse. Uh, Dad, I think Alabama's talked enough now. We'd better let him rest. Oh, don't listen to her, Dad. I'm feeling spry as a doggie. Well, I guess you're right, Rose. 
Alabama does need a rest, and so do you. Oh, uh, you yeah, come with no. me back to the bunkhouse. But, Dad, I'm not tired, really. Now, you come along, or you'll keep him from resting yourself. Uh, I'll be back later, Alabama. Oh. <laughs> All right, sir. All right, then. Well, Goodbye, sir. Alabama. Yeah, Arizona, uh, you watch Alabama for me, won't you? Now, you see that he doesn't try to get out of his bus. Sure I will, Rose. This is one time I can get the best of Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Arizona. I reckon you can keep one eye on Alabama and play your guitar. Let's give him another tune before he goes to sleep. Sure. Yeah. 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 Huh? Well, uh, oh, Tenderfoot. I think that's Alabama, wants you, Tenderfoot? Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. go, go right on with your singing, boys. I'll be just talking to him a minute. Me, Alabama? Yeah, Tenderfoot. Pull up a box there and sit down close, will you? Sure. You suppose the boys can hear us talking? Why, I don't think so. Not while they're singing. Well, Tenderfoot, I'm going to tell you something I ain't told no one else. You mean about how you got hurt? Yeah. And just you and I are to know it. I can trust you for that, can't I? Why, of course, but, but what... Uh, you see, I happen to be pretty sure who struck that blow on my head. Well, who struck it? But I thought you said <laughs> This that you... is something I didn't want anyone else to know but you. I'll tell you what happened. I rode across the bar D to see if Dan Higgins uh, was right about the, someone running the brands on the Red Horse cattle, uh -huh. and I saw plenty. Then it's true? I'm plumb sure of it. Even saw where they'd built the fires off in the trees to uh -huh. do the branding. And I headed Red back toward the Red Horse along in the evening. And when I rounded the hill, riding along the fence on the bar D ranch, I met up with Steve Bradford. What? Steve Bradford? I can remember that much. I reckon he won't soon forget it either. Why, what? Me and Bradford had a few words, and he accused me of prying around his ranch. Oh, uh, well, I had a hard time holding myself down, but I figured it wouldn't do no good to kick up a fuss, so I turned to get back on red, and, well, that's the last I remember till I woke up lying in this bunk. So it's Steve Bradford that did it. Listen... Why don't you tell the fellas, Alabama? Uh, we'll ride over there and have it out with Bradford. Oh, wait a minute, Tenderfoot. We ain't telling anyone yet. Now... Only Tenderfoot and Alabama know what really happened. What does Alabama plan to do about Bradford? Why is Bradford so anxious to get possession of the red horse? Why? <laughs> 